JP. Thank you, Chief Justice. Uh, it is customary to disclose that uh, we know each other. Mr. Villa and I first met in Peter Marisberg in 1982, and allow me to elaborate a bit. Uh, it was myself, it was Derek Villa, Judge Zondi and I, we were students, and uh, he helped me, I must be frank. I could not at the time live in a white area, and I remember one day I arrived in the library in the morning after I was assaulted by the cops, they clubbed me, harassing me for being in a white area, and Derek asked me, why was I tearful? I told him, he immediately took my dompas and employed me as his gardener. And that's where we started knowing each other. <laughs> and he used every three months to accompany me to the uh, council offices in order for me to have my dompas endorsed to enable me to stay, to, to live in a white area, which in turn enabled me to get my law degree. Thank you, Chief Justice. If I may, at paragraph 2.2.5 of the Bar Council's comments, they, they have suggested that the reasons why the candidate left the employer of some of the attorney's firms should be probed, and that clarification should be sought as to whether one of those Ersfeld firms had at the candidate's behest paid for the education of the judge president's son. It was also mentioned that the candidate continued to practice as an attorney while acting as a judge. Can you provide us with your comments on that, Mr. Villa? Yes, well, first of all, I was with Buchanan Boys um, attorneys for a long period of time. I was head of litigation. Regrettably, my senior partner was struck from the role. Regrettably, four of the exco members of that firm were struck from the role at the time that I was there. I felt uncomfortable. They weren't struck from the role. I apologize. They were suspended, and the senior partner was struck from the role for allegedly being involved with um, buying work from conveyances. I felt very uncomfortable with that. At that stage, I had received an offer from Cliff Decker Hofmeyer, and I moved to, to that firm. As far as the education of the Judge President's son was concerned, his eldest son, Tatuku, Tatuka worked for me, did some vacation work for the firm that I was with as a messenger and later as a filing clerk. The bursary scheme was then initiated by Buchanan Boys. Because of my efforts in transformation, I was head of the bursary scheme. Tutuka wanted to study law, and uh, he made an application. I was in the Cape Town office, and I was head of the bursary scheme. I stood down from that panel, and Tutuka was interviewed in the Claremont branch, where I was not, uh, I was not even present, and he received a bursary, I believe, for his first year of study. So. Um, I don't think there's anything sinister about that. The Judici Judicial Service Commission, as I understand it, probed this matter um, quite vigorously some time ago. I cooperated with them fully, and I gave uh, records and evidence, and uh, the judge president was exonerated completely. And uh, there was nothing sinister or untoward about it. The mere fact that he was the judge president's son caused the problem. Um, I don't think it was a problem. We were looking for very, we were looking for good candidates of color that we could give bursaries to so that they become lawyers. And uh, that, was head, that was part of my job as head of the Transformation Committee at Buchanan Boys. 